But you know, if we're really going to build a complete Silverlight plugin, just working with Kazaml ain't going to be enough. Okay? So this is where we start to come into the territory of blend. Right? Now, there is also a beta version of blend. And if you want to download that trial beta version, you're going to have to get 2.5, because that's what has the Silverlight support. Okay, if you have the older versions of Blend, it doesn't have Silverlight projects. It just has WPF projects. Now remember, the reason that this tool, Blend, was given to us is just very simple. You know, most programmers are not graphical artists. You know, maybe we'd all like to be, but few of us actually are. Any more than a graphical artist wants to write a bunch of C-sharp code. Right? Very different types of skill sets. Okay? So, using Silverlight, or the projects for a Silverlight inside of Blend, Again, we can let those graphical-minded folks do what they do best. Right? If you go to that part of the silverlight.net website, there's that area called the showcase area. That's where I said they have a whole bunch of samples. You know, just go ahead and click around a little bit. And you're going to start to see things like this over here. And uh, you know, that's a production-level Silverlight plugin. Okay? Uh, much more than my little growing rectangle. <laughs> right? A lot more flair than that. So Blend is really, like I said, sort of like, think of it almost like a Photoshop-like tool for generating XAML, right? So the graphical artist type person, or really, you know, exceptional programmer that's also an artist, they can use this tool, and the tool generates all that XAML for us. We don't see a lick of XAML if we don't want to look for it, right? We just use these tools to make timelines for animations. We can right-click and drop down a menu system and open up dialog boxes. We can grab a button and rotate it to do a transformation. But this big elaborate tool is just an extremely fancy XAML editor. Okay? In addition, Microsoft has another member of the expression family that you might want to look at called Design. And that would be a tool which is really dedicated towards just building vector-based graphics. Right? You know, Blend is more about the whole enchilada. Right? I want to build a control template. Now I want to make an animation. Now I want to do this graphic over here. You know, the design product is really just more, you know, that's probably really Photoshop for XAML. Because right? it's just about generating graphics. So you can download eval versions of Blend 2.5. Right? You just do a Google search on it, but Microsoft.com slash expression. Okay? And that would be a very good tool to download and start tinkering with. Because uh, it's, it's cool, but it's uh, fairly, fairly big. Right? It ain't like Visual Studio. <laughs> You're not going to use Blend to start typing in your C-sharp code. In fact, if you like, try to open up a C-sharp file in Blend, it just launches Visual Studio. Right? There are two different things. Right? Graphic people over here, programmers over here. And yeah, there's some crossover, but it's really kind of geared for different skill sets. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you Blend real quick here and just kind of show you the interaction between Visual Studio and Blend. But notice how if you were a programmer with some art skills or a graphic artist per se, you could just fire up Blend and you could pick a brand new Silverlight 2.0 application. Now for those that don't know, the cool thing about the Blend project is it's the same exact project as Visual Studio. Same project files, right? So the designer can go here. I can open it up over here. Conversely, if we start with Visual Studio right, to make a new Silverlight application, then the, pro the artist could open up the same thing over in Blend. So one project type, two different tools. Make sense? OK. And let's do that. And we're going to take a deeper look at exactly what we get in a Silverlight 2.0 project. Right? All right, so let me open up a new instance of Visual Studio 2008 here. Remember, you have to download the Silverlight plugins, right? So what I'm going to show you right now, you would not see this if you did not take the time to download the project types. But once you do, you're going to see this new little area called Silverlight. right? And when you pick a Silverlight application, you have a choice to make. Remember, ultimately, a Silverlight plugin is going to be on some web page somewhere. right? So I'm going to make a little simple Silverlight app. We'll just call it um, MS Talk Demo App. Okay, so when I click OK here, it's going to ask me, all right, 
do you want me to also generate a complete ASP.NET web project that will have some default code that uses those Silverlight controls to show your control? Or do you want me to auto-generate an HTML test page on the fly? Okay. Like, you know, when we're doing um, web services or WCF services, when you run the service, you get that auto-generated HTML page. Same kind of an idea. Okay. So I'm going to say generate it for me dynamically. Okay. That will simplify what we're going to see. Okay. Now, again, if you do have some background in WPF, you're going to feel immediately comfortable. Because notice, for example, that we have a page and an app. Okay? So the page is what we're seeing right here in the designer right now. Right? And notice what this Silverlight control actually is. Right? It's actually a user control. And this is something that a lot of WPF programmers do to make their own custom control type. You make a user control. Okay? So I can start to type in here any kind of markup that I want to go ahead and represent the look and feel of my Silverlight application, right? my Silverlight plugin. So again, I'm just going to keep it simple for right now. Then we'll do a real interesting demo in a second here. Let's just do a simple button. Remember that X prefix, my BTN. And we'll give it a height of uh, 40 and a width of 120 and content of OK. OK, so there's my lovely little button, right? As we're typing in all this markup, and then we actually compile the application, what's going to happen here is that this XAML is going to be put into a binary compact format. Remember that term BAML I talked about? Okay. In addition, this will also be used with a partial class file. And in that partial class file, you will see member variables. And we'll look at it together. But there's going to be a member variable called myBTN, right? Of type system.windows.controls.button, right? The Silverlight button type, right? Now, this little application type also might look familiar to those of you that have been working with WPF, right? This kind of represents the entirety of the Silverlight plugin, right? Don't think application as in an exe, though, right? just meaning the running instance of this Silverlight plugin. So I can handle events just like I would for a WPF app, right? Startup, exit, unhandled exception. In my startup, it's going to make that page, right? And then also, if we take a look over here at the referenced assemblies, you know, these guys might look awfully darn familiar. MS Core Live, system.core.dll. That's where all the link stuff's pretty much packed inside of, right? Information here for system.windows, which again appears as if it's a WPF program, system.xml, right? But like I said, if you look carefully down here, right? Look at that um, version number of MS Core Live, 2.0.5.0, right? Different version of MS Core Live. If I were to open up the object browser, right? notice how the reference path is in a whole different place as well. It's coming from the Silverlight SDK folder. All right? I want that version of MS Core Live. Right? But if we take a peek at what's inside of there, it'll look fairly familiar. You can tell already it's smaller. Okay? But you know, a lot of my old friends are here, system.collections.generic. Right? Uh, someone had a question about threading. Right? We still got quite a bit of thread support here. Okay. System.core. Well, there's all my link stuff, right? Good old enumerable. Right? The dreaded funk delegates. Right? All those guys are all here too. 